Welcome back. So now we're going to talk about the natural logarithm. And what the natural logarithm is, is a logarithm with a base of e. Okay, so this idea that exponential um, functions are inverses of logarithmic functions holds true. Remember, e is just a number. Okay, but it's so important in our real world that it has its own abbreviation. So instead of writing log base e, okay, we write just ln. And usually you see a cursive ln, okay? So when we call this the natural logarithm. Um, so the natural logarithm function we can see right here is the inverse of the natural exponential parent function. And so if we were to look at those graphs, we would see that they are reflections of each other over the line y equals x. Okay, so we've got one that would be exponential growth, and then we would have the other one that would have the y-axis as its asymptote. So this would be e to the x, and this would be ln of x, and this one would kind of flatten out. Okay, because this is just a logarithmic function with a base of e, okay, all of the properties that we've learned still apply. The two, or the Two properties we'll look at the most will be our inverse properties. Um, and so remember our inverse properties are what does it that makes one. So before we learned that if we took the log of 10, that would equal one because the base of the logarithm is equal to what we're taking the log of. So same idea here, the natural log of E is going to equal one. Another thing we looked at before is if we had a log in the exponent, we could cancel this from base to base. Again, if the base of the logarithm matched the base of the exponent. Same thing here. If I have um, e to the ln of x, that would simply just equal x. So whenever we get e and ln next to each other, it makes a one. So that's going to be our goal whenever we're asked to simplify these expressions. Let's try a few together. The first one I see is the natural log of e to the power of 0.15 t. So um, remember if this is a power we can drop it down in front. So I'm going to rewrite it with that in front. 0 0.15 t natural log of e. But remember, the natural log of e is just 1. So this is just equal to 0.15t. Right, next one. Now we have an exponential expression with a logarithm in it. Remember like before, if we have the e and the ln together, we can cancel to make a 1. But that 3 is in the way. So what we're going to do is move the 3 from in front and make it an exponent. So the opposite direction that we moved before. So e to the natural log of x plus 1 cubed. Those now cancel and all we have is x plus 1 to the power of 3. Again, all of the same properties apply. We were using the product property just now, as well as inverse properties. What I noticed in this last example is I noticed that we have um, our product property. Remember, we learned that if we see two logarithms with the same base being added together, we can multiply these two things um, and write a single logarithm. So the natural log, and remember when the bases are the same, we can add the exponents. 2x plus another x is 3x, so e to the 3x. My handwriting is terrible on that one, I'm sorry. And now I see the natural log and e next to each other. I remember that 3x can drop down in front. So 3x times the natural log of e, there we go, that's some better handwriting. That's 1, so this is just 3x. All the same properties apply. Okay, we'll practice a bunch more of those in class on Wednesday. 
All right, we're gonna do one more problem together and then wrap things up for our videos this week. We're going to do one problem together that uses um, compound interest formula, a continuously compounded interest. The formula is A equals PERT, sometimes we say PERT. A is the total amount. P is the principal. Remember, principal is the original amount, the starting amount. So we'll write that there. P is principal, that means start. R is the annual interest rate. Remember, we need to change interest rates from per percents to decimals. And T is the time in years. Okay, let's read the question. What is the total amount for an investment of $500 invested at 5.25% interest for 40 years and compounded continuously? So we're looking for the total amount A we're given the principal P, the rate, and the time. Now remember, E is just a number. So we have just a whole bunch of numbers we're going to work with, and then we'll figure out what that total amount is. All right, 500 E. And remember, change that to a decimal. Oh, no. Here we go. Uh, 0 0.0525 times the number of years, 40. All right, pick up those calculators. Do this. Make sure you know how to put this in your calculator. 500, and then second LN to get to that E button. 0 0.0525 times 40, then close the parentheses. And we get $4,083. And I'm just going to leave it as a whole number. Because when we're talking 4000 over $4,000, you probably don't care too much about that last eight cents. Right? All right. So I would say that's a pretty good interest rate if it's compounded continuously. Okay. What could be interesting to do next is to compare that back to our simple interest formula um, and see how it compares that compounded continuously versus just simple interest, okay? All right, so that's it for the week. Here's your summary question. How are E and LN related? They're inverses. All right, and here's your homework assignment. Notice um, I want you to do six through 10, and then again, 13 through 21, okay? So make sure you do both chunks of problems. Um, the reason is, is they just add some more of those quick simplifying ones in. Those don't take long, um, and the more you do, the easier they get, so. All right, I will see you in class and in office hours. Have a good week, everybody.